Okay, this is the Monday presentation, but I fell a little bit behind, so it's actually Tuesday when I'm recording it. I'm being kind of covering some essential things. The first thing I'm going to do is review what we talked about last time, and uh, this is concerning the uh, project application. And then I'm going to talk a little bit uh, um, more detail about patents, uh, which is you're required to have at least one. And then I'm going to show you how to make a block diagram. Now I'm going to emphasize this again. The uh, project application is due at the end of next week, but I need one person from each group to uh, get started on making the block diagram and developing uh, that, that block diagram into a simulink. Uh, simulation uh, eventually after the Thanksgiving. So that person needs to get into gear uh, right now. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, this is a review. So you got you just got done doing the requirements specification, and that is going to feel, feed into the uh, system design part, which is the initial part is the black diagram. I'll have more to talk about system design uh, on a subsequent uh, class. And um, then the uh, the, sim the block diagram, of course, is just a simple thing. And then the Simulink simulation will be at the end of the semester. And then, then you're going to go into next semester. So I wanted to point out again, once again, that uh, at least three or four groups did not have a thesis statement in their requirement specification. And here is an example of how to, how to do it. So here's your uh, assignment. That's going to be due uh, Friday at the end of next week. And so the, your organization of the project application has four parts, introduction, design, reference list, and resumes. Now, I didn't show you actually where this appeared in the document, so let me go ahead and do it. It actually appears on the grade sheet. So let me go jump to the grade sheet. So here it is, introduction, and here are the points associated with that, design and the points, the references, points, and the uh, resumes. Okay, that will total 100 points. So let me go back to where I was. So you're going to use your four uh, and you're going to update them possibly the requirement speci specification sections in this and I'm going to show you where it is again. The new sections that you're going to add are the literature search, the design, including the black diagram and a table of design technologies and coursework. Now I actually discussed all these already but again this is more of a hard copy of, of this idea. So here it is. Um, the red and the blue and the green are what you've done already, and the new parts are the yellow, all right? So they fall into those uh, four things that you've already done, plus adding the three new things, okay? I'm not going to discuss this because I kind of went over it before, but here's the, here's the handout on this. And so the grade sheet associated with this is going to be uh, the same colors. One, two, uh, five are already done. And three, four, and six is what you've got to do. And I did clean this all up a, a little bit. The resumes is are required. I took out the X here. That was it put in by mistake. And pay attention also to point six. I want you to draw a table here that will combine basically the uh, required technologies and the coursework into one one uh, table. So you just say, well, we're going to have to have some electronics. And then list your courses between all of you that you've taken in there. Then you may need something in control systems or whatever it is. You put that down and then you list the courses in, in there. It's not very hard, but you need to have that. So that is that is uh, the review associated this. Now, uh, a couple quick things about the patent. All right, I'm gonna have um, a larger lecture about patents to actually explain to you the, the fascinating parts about it. But uh, I took one slide here just basically indicating the designer should always be interested in patents. And the reason is you may unknowingly design something that is covered by somebody else's patent. And to avoid such unhappy and expensive events, a patent search is conducted. Well, uh, we are going to be doing a patent search for one patent that's required uh, on that. Let's kind of review that. Okay, so the review there is you need to have five outside uh, references in your literature search and including one patent. Not six, but five, basically four and one, okay? Or a total of five. So here is the, basically uh, how this works. I've got a, uh, the, the web address is patents.google.com and this is a topic. And notice that the topic typically has uh, pictures and block diagrams 
And I asked you in this document, actually, to have um, a reference that has a black diagram similar to what you will be using. Well, you might even get the idea from a patent. The patents always have black diagrams. They're always really well designed. And so here's an example of one. And here's another one that I just picked up today because we had a smart parking lot uh, project last semester. So I re-looked up the patents that the, this group um, may have used. And again, you have these pictures here of block diagrams that you can use in, in your design if you find one that's kind of similar. And so here's, here's actually the blow up of one of those figures. Okay, so this is a nice little block diagram. And uh, this is something that you can, can draw. Now, the um, importance of system design and the system block diagrams is basically, uh, ba basically it, it, the purpose of it is to decide whether or not the problem is tractable. Now, in engineering, in a real company, you might even spend some time on this and then decide, well, we're not going to do it. But you're not going to do that in a student situation because if you don't do it, you don't graduate. So this is mainly to uh, idea uh, is to do a, something called the system design. And we're going to stop on that and not go any further, but, but to show you an example of a block diagram, which is here. Okay, the system design requires a block diagram, which is what I showed you on the patents. And uh, then very quickly, I went over these before, you can have all kinds of diagrams. First of all, you can have something called a flow diagram, which just basically organizes your thoughts. Customer arrives, customer makes a request, teller inquires uh, about their ID, etc., etc. A software flow diagram looks like this. All right, so computer science and a combination hardware and software block diagram could have software elements and hardware elements over there. Okay, now I did that just to basically introdu introduce this concept. So I'm going to go to the reference that uh, we had in uh, one of the emailings that I gave to you, and I see that I don't have the reference written here. So let me just see if I can flip on over to that video here and play it to you real time. So just hold on a second here. I'm going to go right here, and let's just play uh, a minute and a half of this to show how you can develop a block diagram from Simulink, okay? So here we go. Problem. So the next stop on our tour is automatic port creation. In 17A, we introduce just-in-time automatic port creation. When you drag a line to a port, we will automatically create a port so you can connect the line. You don't have to pre-populate it or pre-create the port before. In 18B, we did one better. We added support for automatic port creation without lines. You can now define... I want to, before he goes too far, they set up a blank box here. This is what I want you to do on your... Um, your block diagram project, and all you need to do is define the inputs and then just put something in between, like like a unity uh, buffer between these two ports. That'll give you, a, uh, and then and then put a box around it by selecting it and and then say call this a subsystem. That from that point you can build systems without actually having the details for it. So let's continue on now. And define your I/O, your system I/O before you create the port. I can select from a signal port, a Simscape port or even a bus port. I can do this for the chart block, and I can even do it for the scopes. You might remember this one here is your state machine. You can easily just make one that's blank. Once I'm done creating all the ports, I can just wire up my diagram, and I'm done. The next stop on our tour is cleanup. Now, this model has a ton of space over here, and I wonder if I can rotate these blocks 90 degrees and move these blocks over to save some space. Okay, I'm not too interested in that, but what I am interested in is this. Notice that they've got some blocks here. Uh, here's a block with something filled into it. There's a picture inside that block. Here's the same thing. Here's another block with a picture inside of it. And then look at this one, guys. This is a block with a picture in it, and then they remove the outline of the block. This is fantastic stuff. So how do you do that? Well, uh, I look, 
looked it up online. I've got somebody that's going to give you a quick presentation of how to do this, and then you can make really nice looking uh, block diagrams. So let's go back and uh, look at this. I guess we'll be done with this guy for the time being. And this is it. All right, how to put images on Simulink blocks. So let's, let's let uh, this presenter do it rather than me saying it. In this model, I have a solar photovoltaic subsystem. Now I want to put an image on this block. For that, I need to have an image in the same folder in which the Simulink model is saved. Now, right click the subsystem, go to the mask and click on edit mask. In this window, you need to give a command to load an image. For that, just type image in the brackets, I am read in the quotes, the image name. It Notice, by the way, this little section right here, block frame. If you make it invisible, then the actual lines, the square, the rectangular uh, black lines around the block will disappear. That's the secret on that one. In my case, the image name is solar.png. Now click apply and it's done. Thanks a lot. There you go. All right, so we're done with that. And that shows you how to put an image in the block. And again, you can remove those black lines also. So there's a tremendous amount of things you can do with in the Simulink area uh, to even create a block diagram. So I want th those people, uh, the one from each person in, in the group, to get started on this. Get them going on this because they'll have to work the whole rest of the semester not only coming up with a basic black diagram, but being able to actually do a simulation. And uh, it's important, it's imperative to separate uh, that person, give that person that assignment, and the rest of you in the group either could be two people or one person. Then you, start, you guys can start uh, working on the project application. So let's go over to the slides now. So the slides that I have are basically just repeats of what you saw in the video. And so for the, the audit effortless port creation here, the next thing he did was this, and then he created that, and I showed the, the blockless uh, diagrams or the images in the, in the block, all right? And then here's a couple images from the last presenter, how to put an image in the block, and here's the steps, and there you have it, okay? so. That's the explanation uh, for, for that. Now, um, I think I'm going to uh, stop at this point. The system design process is something I'd like to pick up at, at a, a, a next time, and that is um, going to be involving conceptualization, analysis, and synthesis. And this will give me something to talk about later. So that's, that's it for today. And I uh, encourage you to get started on your project application, which includes having a uh, block. All right, let's kind of re review that in the beginning. And so, all right, so your block diagram is specified right here. Use block diagrams or flow charts. Some of you have software projects. And then in terms of the grade, you're going to actually have a block diagram in this chart right here, right there, block sketch, block sketches, block diagram, flow charts, 10, as well as the uh, design concept. Now, when you write the design concept, you're going to explain a block, explain the block diagram. Now, to finish this, then I'm going to actually tell you, I'm going to send you an example project application. You can look that one over and get, get some ideas on, on how it should be written. Basically, it's a, it's a combination of what you have written already, plus the, the new sections of literature search and uh, design and explaining a block diagram. I can even take, take that word here and say, you really need to explain your block diagram, okay? And that's what you're really going to do. And then uh, the tables that I've talked. Okay, so that's it for today.